On today's episode of Doing Everything Wrong the Right Way, I have my other cylinder heads back. So these are the open heads, or what would have been run on an open motor in the Cup Series back in the early 2000s. These, so this head is a restrictor plate head, and it's if you'll notice it's got the small ports. You will have seen those in a previous video uh, when we flow tested them. But these, you can see, much bigger port um, and difference on the flow bench is about 75 CFM 70 75 CFM that's like probably 150 horsepower um, so I wouldn't have gone through all the work of changing the heads if it really wasn't worth it and to me that was that was a pretty big deal um, the only thing that we had to do I had to have New guides put in these, since they were a six millimeter valve, they were a Spintron head, they were some sort of experimental deal. Nobody ever actually ran six millimeter valves, really, valve stems. Um, so we put seven millimeter intake valve guides and five sixteenths exhaust valve guides in it. Um, and I'm actually working on getting all of the spring shims set up. And these are, there's a lot of numbers and whatnot, but the basically the gist is I had all these really big spring pucks or really big spring shims underneath of my valves on the old heads because the pockets were really deep. Um, and we got to cut these down just a little bit to get the installed height right on the spring. So yeah, that's really all that's done there. Um, had brad down at clements mill the exhaust flange actually angle milled it so there's there's actually a bit of an angle to it now and that's to kick i angled it so the top is further in and that actually kicks the bottom of the header out away from my starter um so we're gonna yeah i had him do that and we'll make sure that fits too um what else oh intake manifold Intake manifold got 40 thousandths or so taken off either side of the, of the flanges uh, just to get it to sit down on the block right with the new heads. Um, but otherwise, things are moving right along. Got the front drive just about done. Uh, dry sump lines are on. This one's kind of just hanging out back there till I get the head on. Um, but we're gonna get on the lathe and cut down some spring shims um, and get our heads assembled and we will get to assemble this thing so here we go another thing that got changed um, in between taking those heads apart and getting these heads back and assembling them um, there's all these shims all these they're about 150 to 200 thousand thick aluminum pucks that are underneath these springs um i actually had to they were about 300 and 280 thousands um, i had to cut them down so i could get the installed height right on these on this head because these heads don't have the same spring pockets cut in them as these do these have some ridiculously deep spring pockets cut in them um, which is the reason for all the shim um, but we also changed the installed height on the springs um, got these are a, they're a PSI 15B spring. Uh, they're actually a flat tappet spring supposedly, um, so they don't quite have as much spring rate as what you would expect for a roller spring. Um, but they were, basically we took the or I took the installed height down to about an inch 865. Um, so we've got about 212 pounds on the seat and about 570 pounds open. So we should have enough to keep keep things under control up to about 9,000 RPM or so. Um, past that, we'll see. Kind of see what what it does on the dyno. Um, but anyway, let's get to get started. I need to reassemble or take these checker springs off and reassemble these two valve springs and then we will get to putting the heads on the engine.
So I got the heads cleaned up um, and reassembled, cleaned out the it, exhaust and the intake ports. Um, and I'll clean the decks when I stand the heads up here and get them over here to the block. Um, went ahead and put the head studs in. Uh, basically it's all your half inch tall head studs up top, the shorter half inch ones down on the bottom, and then uh, your there's 10 3 8 head studs here on the outside. Um, went ahead and I got a I got the special sauce on the the fine thread ends here um, so we can bolt the heads on with the correct torque um, and I went ahead and actually cleaned I like to clean the decks with like denatured alcohol um, to make sure that there's no oil or um, get all the contaminants off of the off of the deck before we put the head gaskets on so that they seal um, so let's get to putting the heads on this thing oh one thing before you put heads on an R5 you do have to remember you got to put all the lifters in because you can't get the lifters in or I guess if they're a tie bar lifter you cannot get the tie bar underneath the head um, to actually get the lifters in with the heads on so you have to remember to do that and these since these are a tie bar roller setup um, we had to do that it's keyway keyway roller lifters you might be able to I don't know um, but these ones you can't get the lifters in so lifters are in um, let's get the heads on Another thing to remember, it'll focus here, the head gaskets on an R5 are directional. Um, so if you'll see, this says front, this side up, basically it can only go one way. If you put it on the other side, the front would be at the back. So they are directional. So slide that on there, and I'll do it without a camera in my hand. but. We'll get that on there and get the other one on and torque the head down. So now that the heads are on, I've got the rocker stems bolted down and torqued. I um, ended up with two shims underneath the intake stands and four shims underneath the exhaust stands to get our pattern right. Um, you got 21 foot pounds torque on the intake rocker bolt or intake stand bolts, and then 36 foot pounds on the exhaust stand bolts. Um, and thankfully, I was, or since we had to change, change the height of the stand setup just a little bit uh, with some different shims, I actually had to get different length push rods. Um, and thankfully, Dennis over at Promore had push rods in stock that we needed. So I'm going to put push rods in this thing and get some rockers bolted on and start lashing valves. So here we go.
there distributors in got the intake manifold on got all the rockers lashed um just need to start finishing up the front drive here so we'll do that quick you'll notice i actually took and drilled out the water pump holes larger than the bolt hole um, this will help us to be able to actually tension the water pump to the from the center line of the water pump to the center line of the crank and we'll actually be able to lift it up and help tension that belt so i've got a little bit of an issue um the other day i noticed as i got done putting the intake rockers on all the studs holding the intake rockers on are too short um, we've only got about a half, half to three quarters of a nut worth of engagement on all of our intake rockers. Um, and so I got some new studs that came, uh, they're about 300 thousandths longer and you can see over here, this is one that I fixed. Um, and it's actually got the stud sticking out of that now. Um, so basically what happened, uh, we used the studs out of the old heads and this boss that the stand sits on is not the same height or the holes are drilled a different depth i don't really know but the um that's the that's the fix we've got so i'm going to get all those swapped out on the intake rockers and then we'll take a look at this thing So there's what a fully assembled Dodge R5 valve train looks like. Got both sides done. All our, our old, all valves are lashed. Um, basically ready to bolt the valve covers on. This thing is done. Got a uh, got an inch 450 throttle bore uh, stealth carburetor. That's a or stealth built carburetor. Um, should flow. Right about 1100 CFM or so. Um, should make this thing fairly throttle responsive. Um, being that it's just a little bit smaller than kind of what would normally be used on something like this is for like a cup engine. Um, but yeah, basically it's done. Got to throw valve covers and the spark plug wires on. Um, then I got to mount the alternator, but otherwise this thing is ready to go to the dyno.